Hey everyone, uh, me, Piotr, and Dalma have been building this for a while, and I thought that it's time to show it to the world. So I wanted to tell you about the ROM Toolkit uh, browser extension that we've been building. Uh, it's currently available on both Chrome Web Store and Firefox add-on store, so you can go in there to install it. And when you do that, um, you'll get the menu like this. Um, so here you see like an uh, overview of features it has. Uh, you can like enable it, disable it, and there are like more details inside. So here, um, well, let, let, let's take a look at what we have. So one thing we have is date manipulation functionality. So one thing is fuzzy date. Another thing is incrementing, decrementing the date. Uh, space repetition functionality. Uh, block manipulation, so duplicating, deleting block shortcuts, um, task estimation, and ability to set custom CSS. So let's dive a bit deeper in each of those. Uh, first one is something that gained uh, wide acclaim already with my other tools is fuzzy date functionality. What it allows you to do is to type in the date in the human format, and uh, Run Toolkit is going to transform it into the ROM, uh, properly ROM formatted date. So how you use it is you type semicolon, then type like some date. So for example, Wednesday, and then type another semicolon. And um, yeah, ROM Toolkit is gonna transform it to the date of Wednesday in the ROM format. So here are some other examples of supported formats. It's not an exhaustive list, uh, just some examples. Um, if you wonder if a particular format is supported, just give it a try, it probably works. Um, other thing uh, ROM Toolkit supports is an um, ability to quickly increment, um, decrement the date, also great for scheduling. Um, so if uh, you have just one date within a block, you place a cursor there, you press a shortcut, so in my case it's Control alt app um, or down, and you're gonna have increase or decrease the date um, quickly. Uh, if there are more than uh, one date, uh, you need to place the cursor just within the date for that to work. So uh, it's gonna uh, increment or decrement the particular date you're in. Now, um, other than that, we have the block manipulation shortcuts. So you can uh, duplicate the block. Um, Right, and then uh, you can delete the block, and you also can uh, duplicate just part of the content that is selected. Uh, so you, you press the same duplication shortcut, and it's going to duplicate just that part. Um, the next thing is calculating estimates for tasks. So uh, very useful for task management. We, what I usually do is I add estimates to task I want to do, and then like do a uh, week planning and uh, see, okay, what is the total for the week? Can I do that within a week? Does it make sense? How do I prioritize that? So how it works is basically you have um, these tasks, and each of them has the property that defines the estimate for the task. And uh, so here we have two tasks. Then um, what you do is you write a query that would select those estimates. So here we have we select anything that is to do and has an estimate um, straightforward. And uh, then uh, what you would do is to place the cursor just beside the query block. So that, that is important and because of how Realm Toolkit currently works. Um, so you place it just beside the block and then you press shortcut Control M and it's going to compute uh, the total estimate for uh, this query. Uh, you can change uh, the property that is used and the shortcut in the settings. Um, right, so as I mentioned, putting it just beside the query is important, otherwise it wouldn't work. Uh, the next thing uh, I'm going to dive uh, a bit deeper here is spaced repetition. And so spaced repetition um, is a cool technique that allows you to uh, learn new things, um, be that fonts or skills. 
Um, so I've implemented Anki scheduling algorithm for the run toolkit. So uh, what you have here is basically a block that has a bunch of metadata uh, is a spaced repetition card. So from the metadata, we have interval, factor, and the actual next review date. So interval uh, indicates uh, how long would it be before the next review. Uh, factor indicates how, how easy was it for you to review uh, these things before, and well, the next review date should be obvious. Um, right, so you can place the metadata uh, just within the block or as a child of the block. Uh, so uh, when you learn something, uh, so when you do the card, you would then press one of the four shortcuts that would indicate how easy was it for you to remember uh, the note. So here I can play, say for example that it was easy for me to review the note and it's going to be scheduled for 12.5 12 12 days in the future for March 31st. Um, Right, so uh, other things, other possibilities besides easy is good, uh, hard, and again, so um, all of them would uh, reschedule uh, the card for some point in the future based on how easy was, was it for you to remember. Again, it's a bit special, it's going to schedule it for tomorrow. So it's basically you telling um, the Rumtel kit that uh, you totally forgot it and you want to relearn it from the start. Uh, if block has no metadata, you can press either of those shortcuts and it's going to create the default metadata. So, for example, I'm going to press good uh, shortcut here and um, I get the uh, metadata for, uh, yeah, review as if it's like a new card and I reviewed it with good uh, scores. So, um, the next review is going to be on March 20th. And so that's basic uh, functionality that Trump Toolkit provides. But besides that, important part is how you actually format the cards for using within Rome uh, for spaced repetition. So there are multiple styles of card, and I'm going to go over them now. So first one is just an information block that you want to repeatedly rise to your attention. An uh, example of this type of card would be um, <clears throat> Simulation of Freedwise, which is a great service within Rho. So the idea is to review the highlights from the book you made uh, repeatedly to better internalize the um, lessons you learned from that book or insights you had. So what you do is you import the highlights into Rome and uh, then uh, you add the uh, space repetition metadata block. And so it's going to show up. So this is like a real card I have. And the next review for me is going to uh, come up on the April 10th. Um, right. So that's like the most basic one. Then you can have question and answer cards. Uh, so they're also pretty simple. Uh, what you have is the question as the parent block. And it also has the um, Spaced repetition metadata. So here we have the question: How do you use fuzzy data in Rome toolkit? And um, so we think and we remember that the answer is to surround the uh, human formatted date between semicolons. And we can open and see that we got it right. And then we're gonna say, okay, that was easy. So I'm gonna schedule it uh, for a later review. And then. Um, yeah, you press the appropriate shortcut, uh, and yeah, uh, then you can clump the card so you're gonna uh, for, for the next review. Uh, the next style of cards is the closer deletion card. So, the closer deletion is basically when you have uh, some continuous block of text and uh, you want to remember some particular sub part of it. So you would hide it and you would test yourself on remembering that sub part. Uh, there are multiple ways to uh, simulate that within Rome. I uh, listed here two, uh, the two that I like the most. So the first one is to just use the Anki syntax for, for close deletion. So what you would do is you have um, like some block of text that uh, 
you want to remember, right? And then uh, you surround it into the curly brackets, uh, type some hint, uh, and type two semicolons. And so when you, the block is rendered, you see just the hint. But if you click on the edit, um, you see the content of the uh, hidden uh, parts. Uh, and this allows you to actually have multiple color deletions within one block. So um, as we see in the real card here, and uh, so when you click on them, you see the content of both. But um, so we have hints here, C1 and C2. They're not very useful as hints, but uh, what they serve for is to actually indicate uh, what scheduling block they belong to. So I have two scheduling blocks um, underneath this um, note instead of one. So um, but like e each of those deletions are scheduled separately. And so C1 is scheduled for May 11th, uh, C2 for April 15th, and they're gonna show up on the corresponding dates. So that's one way to do it. That's my preferred way most of the days, uh, as it's um, very simple to use and it works everywhere. The second approach um, requires us to rely on um, the functionality of from toolkit that we mentioned but haven't looked at yet it's custom css so how it works is that um you would create uh, you would have like some original block right then uh you would extract the things that you want to remember into the child sub blocks and then you're gonna embed them back in as the embedded blocks Right, and uh, so you, you can still uh, still see them right now. Uh, so you wonder how how does the actual deletion work? And for that, we need this uh, snippet of CSS. So we can go to the menu, uh, custom CSS, paste it in, apply, and now we can see that um, those things are actually hidden right now. So and if you want to view them, you hover the mouse on top of them, and um, they get revealed. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, it's a bit more cumbersome to set up uh, because the um, actual block um, you would see here needs to be something like this. So you basically create a HTML block uh, with um, a particular um, class. Uh, and then you paste the content you want to remember. Now it's a bit technical, but what you really need to know is just copy paste this and replace the content uh, uh, you want to remember with whatever. So um, yeah, and as above the scheduling metadata goes uh, beneath the particular uh, thing that you want to remember. So uh, again, each block has separate scheduling metadata. So from one uh, block, you get multiple cards in a way. Mm -hmm. Right, so final thing I wanted to mention is the support for limiting system. Uh, it's a bit of a honorary mention um, as uh, the spaced repetition approach that I mentioned above, I believe is rather superior. But lightness system is how the Rome toolkit has started. So the whole thing got uh, inspired by the anonym S um, video that he made for spaced repetition in Rome. It's pretty cool. I'm going to link to that. And uh, so how it works is basically you have a bunch of boxes. So from one to 10, for example, and each of those boxes has the review date attached to it. So say uh, the review date for the box two is the March 18th. And now when you review the card and you know it, uh, you move it to the next box. And that's where ROM Toolkit comes. It um, has a shortcut to move thing to the next box. Um, when you don't remember it, you move it to uh, the first box or previous box. Um, well, that's it basically. Um, it's it's a simple system, but um, like it, it's easy to implement manually. Uh, it has some interest, some weird consequences um, if you think through it. Uh, so anyway, most of the yeah, uh, I prefer to use the space repetition system outlined above. Um, but you can choose either. Okay, uh, so that's ROM Toolkit, what it supports right now. 
Um, I hope you find this useful and uh, please let me know if you have questions or feature requests um, on the GitHub page for Rum Toolkit.